This is the first tutorial on our setting up a blockchain network with Hyperledger Fabric. And in this video, we're going to cover how we can install Hyperledger Fabric and all of the prerequisite software that's needed and actually installing it onto our system. So let's start. Um, this website is basically the entire wiki for the Hyperledger Fabric um, instrumentation and all the knowledge you need to find out what Hyperledger Fabric is and what particular kind of blockchain um, it enables, which is uh, um, the opposite of this basically, which Bitcoin and Ethereum are. So I encourage everyone who's watching this to actually go over all these key concepts that are also listed here to actually understand the technicalities of Hyperledger Fabric, but let's go ahead and get started with the install process. So in order to do that, we're just gonna go on the install page and prerequisite software and it's organized by major operating systems, namely Mac, Linux, and Windows. So since this is a Windows machine I'm recording on, we're gonna follow the setup for Windows. Now, of course, um, if you don't already have this, you should definitely enable the Windows subsystem for Linux because it just makes life way easier if you're developing any kinds of software on a Windows machine, unless it's Windows specific software with .NET or what have you. But the first step we're going to do basically is going to have to install Docker Desktop. So let's go ahead and do that. I already have completed this process, but I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So you're just going to click this and it's going to, um, you know, create the start the installation process for you. And it's very simple. You just have to click accept and move, it, move on with that. Um, the next thing you need to do is you need to enable um, Windows subsystem for Linux. And in order to do that, the first thing you actually need to do is in your Windows um, menu, you actually need to enable two specific things, which in specific are the Windows subsystem for Linux. So this, as you can see, I've already enabled it and the virtual machine platform, which I've also enabled already. But if by default they're not enabled, so when you actually do check them off, um, your system will need to restart with the updated software it needs to download and install. So we've already done that, so we can go ahead and skip that, but you definitely need, need to do this. And in order to make sure that your Docker desktop is integrated with um, WSL2, um, the first thing you also need to do is open the Windows or Microsoft Store and install the latest long-term um, you know, Ubuntu system, which is 22.04. Point three at the time of this recording and again I've already installed it so it's already there I don't need to do this again um, but that's what you need to install and once that's installed it's gonna give you the ability to actually open Ubuntu as you can see here so we've already opened it and we can go ahead so this is already installed that we're that we're on Ubuntu right now this is the WSL2 window um, but when you have Docker installed you need to open the Docker app and go into the settings, resources, WSL integration, check this box off and toggle on for your latest um, distro that we just installed, which in our case is 22.04. So you need to make sure you've done this in Docker desktop also. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose our IDE of choice, which is going to be Visual Studio Code. Now, again, that's something you can install through the Microsoft Store as well. So you can just type in code. Um, and Visual Studio Code right there. As you can see, this is also already installed on my system, but if it's not, you can install it from here. Once that's installed, again, it installs to the Windows part of your operating system, but we want to invoke it through our WSL integration, right? And the easiest, the simplest way to do that is simply by invoking the code command from your WSL window as I'm doing, as I'm doing here and just ask it to open the current workspace, which is um, this to the period. And you can see it opens a Windows, uh, a Virtual Studio Code window with your current WSL context. So it's running in my Ubuntu system versus if I just um, you know, start code from the Windows operating system directly, you see it runs like in the Windows uh, operating system directly which we don't want that. We want it to run on our virtual um, system, which is the Ubuntu system. 
So that's basically all you need to get started in terms of prerequisite software. And every time you're using your IDE for developing your Fabric network, you want to invoke it from the Ubuntu system itself. Um, another thing you want to have, which is kind of redundant because we're already using this in our Ubuntu system, is make sure these two uh, extensions, so remote, WSL, of course, these should already um, you know, be there. And then remote containers, also there, so it's all good. So yeah, um, the next thing we need to do is, I've already set these um, to be like so within my um, code settings. So if you go and take a look at my settings in code, um, you can see that I have this extra line I've added because I sync my settings in Visual Studio Code across a bunch of different operating systems because I have a cloud setting sync turned on. So you can see it's synced to my GitHub. So whenever I um, log into Visual Studio Code with my account, the, this is the default preferences that automatically loads up. So you can see here, I already have this enabled. So you just have to add this line to your settings in your JSON if you prefer. It just makes life easier. Um, essentially doing the same thing as this. Um, <clears throat> so let's go to the next step, which is actually installing Fabric. And um, actually, right before we do that, we're gonna be um, writing smart contracts and you can write smart contracts in about three different languages. I think Python, uh, TypeScript, JavaScript, and um, Go. And Go is I think the default choice for um, the Fabric developers for writing your smart contracts. So we also need to install Go in our um, you know, WSL2 virtual platform, uh, virtual operating system. Um, and so in order to do that, we can just follow the installation instructions for Go on Linux. Because again, this is remember like a virtual machine, so it's actually just running Linux. And so you wanna just um, you know, download the Linux um, tar file for um, Go, one point, whatever the latest version is, in this case, 1.2, 2.2. Um, tar it once it's installed. So you can, you know, when you click the download button, you can actually choose the directory that brings you here in your Linux um, operating system. And then um, I, of course, have already done this. So when I type Go version, you can see I already have Go installed, but it's not installed by default. So you actually need to go through and do all these steps in the context of your um, Linux distribution, which is Ubuntu in our case. So you can see I've got Go installed, I've got code installed. Um, Docker, of course, is integrated with our Ubuntu system. So we're good to go in terms of prerequisite software to get started developing our Fabric environment. And of course, the only thing we're missing right now is the actual Fabric installation. So in my case, you can see that um, I've already installed the fabric samples. Um, but if you wanna do that, you just have to go to the next step, which is uh, right here, install fabric and fabric samples. And you're just gonna, um, you know, you can create your own directory, which this is like, you know, a good rule of thumb when you're creating a Go project is just follow whatever these guys have on the documentation page and then you can use this curl script right here um, that this actually installs fabric. Um, this actually just installs a script, this install fabric.sh. So if you go back here, you see I also, like th this directory fabric samples was a consequence of actually me running this script. So if you actually see what this script does, it basically installs a bunch of, um, you know, containers from Fabric and uh, sample directories that help you get started. You don't, have, um, you don't actually have to go through this, but that's exactly what this script is, uh, this entire thing is doing. And then you wanna run this script uh, and you can again, run it with the H command right here. And it shows you all the extra arguments you can put in to selectively choose what to install, but we just wanna install everything because that's simple. 
Um, that, that's why you can just run this. And when you run that, actually will download samples um, directory and you can see what all is in there. And that's all we need for this video.